of Noah's generation, Noah's day. And the Bible says in the days of Noah that violence filled the land. That every imagination of man's heart was only evil continually. And the Lord said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. So we have a problem, don't we? And I want us to recognize that problem and uh, talk about the real solution ultimately. But in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Apostle Paul was an older preacher who wrote this letter to Timothy. And likewise, the Lord saw fit to have it put in his book that we call the Bible. So we'll begin reading. It says, This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Not a maybe, they shall come. Why? Men. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For this art, are they which creep into houses and lead captivity, captive silly women, laden with sins and led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, the Lord warned us about a bunch of stuff there, but mainly what men will become. And the fact that we should take note of them and have nothing to do with them. That's what it says plainly. But currently... We live in a day of mass shootings, mass murders. Our media and leaders, they talk about new gun laws in hope of stopping the violence. I get calls on a regular basis from the NRA wanting me to support the cause to keep them from outlawing guns and so forth. But folk, guns are not the problem. Now we have a second amendment, by the way, which gives us the right to bear arms. And history tells us the reason that was written was to protect ourselves from anarchy or even a government that would be against us, that would control us. And folk, we live in a day where that's happening. I saw some pictures this week of little children starving to death down here in Venezuela because they have such a thing now. The socialists have taken over. But there is a problem. A few years ago in Aurora, Colorado, there was a theater shooting. Seventy people were shot. Twelve of them were shot dead. Dozens wounded. Newton, Connecticut, Sandy Hook Elementary, 26 kids were shot to death. 
some years back. Numerous other school shootings have taken place right down here uh, in this Galveston school district area. Uh, just a year or so back when they shot and killed those kids. Colleen, Texas, psychiatrist at Fort Hood, shot and killed 12 men. He'd been a Muslim doctor, psychiatrist. 1991, out in the same place, same town, Colleen, George Hennard took his automobile and drove it into a Luby's restaurant. Y'all remember that? Killed 24 people in that restaurant. I read word uh, on the internet that in the last few years there have been 152 different shootings. And those shootings just said it had to, at least eight people lost their lives and more, eight to more. 152 times that's happened that they have record of. About a year and a half ago, 2017, down here, 30 miles from San Antonio, a little town called Sutherland Springs, man went in there on Sunday morning. I believe his name was David. Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. Post-traumatic syndrome, he'd been in service. But he goes there and shoots everybody that was in the church, got wounded. 26 of them died. 20 survived, but they were shot. 46 people all together were shot at the church on Sunday morning by a madman. Folk, it happens. It shouldn't, but it does. A gun is not needed to commit evil. The first person that ever born to a woman was named Cain. The second was his brother named Abel. Y'all know the story. How that Cain murdered his only playmate, his only sibling, his brother, Abel. He didn't have a 45, by the way, folks. But he killed him nevertheless. I read oh, recently there was a nanny that stabbed the two children, small children, to death. He didn't need a gun. And I went back in history. A woman by the name of Andrea Yates. Y'all recognize that name? She's in the mental hospital up here now. Have been for a long time. And get this. She drowned her five little children, one by one. She put them in the bathtub and drowned them to death. You know why she did that? Because a traveling preacher, and we talked about what the scripture said a moment ago about men in perilous times, but a traveling preacher that didn't believe in having a regular worship service, he believed in meeting homes. But he told her that if her children grew up, they could go the wrong way and might wind up in hell. But if she killed them as babies, then they were going to heaven. Well, we'll agree with that, won't we? That babies go to heaven. Even these children that they abort. 
That's the only good thing you can say, well, they're sending them on to heaven. But folk, it's not our place to take the life. I don't care how many states or how many laws and what have you approve that of abortion. It's not up to us to take a life. But kids are aborted, babies are, on a regular basis. They don't need a gun. They just abort them. I heard on the news this week talking about the drug epi epidemic that across the nation, now get this, 130 people die daily across the United States using opioids. Snuffing out their own life. Folk, you don't need a gun to kill yourself. Isn't that sad? That 130 people daily. And I saw another article that said uh, 2017, 70-something thousand people died across the U.S. by overdose in one year. 70-something thousand people. September the 11th, 2001, 19 Muslims crawled into four jet airplanes seeking to destroy the U.S. Flew into those World Trade Centers. And the other places, Washington, but there were four planes. 3,000 people lost their life when that happened. They didn't need a gun. And then a fellow by the name of Timothy McVeigh was angry at the government because of what they did out here at Waco to David Koresh and his crew when they killed those kids, and they did, folk. That Timothy McVeigh decided he'd get revenge on the second anniversary of what happened at Waco. He purchased or took a rider rental truck, loaded it down with fertilizer, backed it up to Alfred Murrow Federal Building in Oklahoma City, and set that thing off and blew it up and killed 300 people. Some of them little kids that were in a daycare center in that federal building. My sister was sitting at her desk in Oklahoma City where she was working when that happened. And her light fell down on her desk. And she was a, a, a few blocks from the actual bumming. So our government thinks we have to pass new laws to fix guns is, is not the subject, folks. People can kill themselves or someone else. I also read an interesting article. Some fellow up in Illinois won the lotto off a of scratch off. Won a million dollars. A few days later, he was dead. By cyanide. Well, you don't need a gun to kill someone if it's in your heart to kill them. There are many other ways. So in passing new laws, is that going to fix the problem? No. God gave ten commandments that were never kept other than one man. His name was Jesus. 
that kept the commandments. The question is, do laws stop people? No. We're pretty well going to do what we want to do, aren't we? And the, the cars that Linda and I drive, it has a little uh, system in it. If you drive it a block or so, all of a sudden it goes cling, 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 cling. Put your seatbelt on, boy. <laughs> we have all kind of warnings, don't we? The point being, if it's in somebody's heart to kill someone, they'll do it. And they don't need the help of a gun. But our Lord forewarned us that in the last days these things were going to come. Well, they've got here. It's the way I see it. I believe we're living in that generation that is going to exist when the Lord comes. Now, how long a generation is, Scripture doesn't tell us exactly. But the Lord said, when you see these things happen, then lift up your head, for that generation will not pass until all things be fulfilled. And folk, I believe we're living there. Now, Paul told Timothy it was because of men would be lovers of their own self that these things would happen. Men and Satan are the problem. But I want to get right quickly to the solution. There is a solution. In Ephesians, right in the middle of your page, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Paul writing the Ephesus church said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having a breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Folk, that is the solution. Verse 10 says, Be strong in the Lord. Amen. And folk, if we're going to be strong, let's make it in the Lord. We need to get our hearts right with the Lord. And let Jesus rule and reign in our life. But verse 11 said we should put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, when you put on God's armor, you're putting the word, and that's what the scripture's about. The last verse I read, verse 17, said, which is the word of God. I appreciate Brother Enrique and Brother James. They've been busy about, we ordered some over 500 Bibles. And by the way, if you want one, take one. We want you to have it. We want to make sure that everyone has one. But it is the word of God. It, it's what we base our life and hope upon. Folk, if the word of God is not true, we're in trouble. But it is true. Amen. 
And we need to engross ourselves with the Word of God. And then verse 14 says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. We need to stand with the truth. We need to know the truth. But why do we have Sunday school? Because we come together and study the Word in a formal manner. We study the word that we might be prepared with the armor of God on to fight the fight that he's given us. He's warning us here about the enemy now. And these things are sure to come. You can't stand for the truth if you don't know the truth. Somebody gets offended about the Bible, what the word of God says. And, well, I point out to you this. This book's not my word. My word's not near comparable to this word. Amen. But if God said it, my pastor used to say, he said, I, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But I'm going to tell you this, briefer than that. God said it, and that settles it, whether I believe it or not. The word of God doesn't rest on my belief, whether I believe it. But the word of God is true. It's eternal. The word of God does not change. Amen. Verse 16 said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We have to trust in God, don't we? He said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, I don't care what Washington or Austin or whoever uh, is head of our government, I don't care what they do. I say I don't care. But I'm going to tell you this much. Whatever they decide to do is not going to stop the wicked and evil heart of man. That's why Jeremiah said that the heart was desperately wicked. Who can know it? He's talking about the natural born. So, folks, when you see this violence that's happening on this earth, Remember that our Lord, through the Apostle Paul, wrote Timothy that these things were going to be, and we should prepare for them. Folks, I can tell you this much. If you haven't prepared for them, that's something important that you must do.